therefore seeing that we have this ministry All you got to do is as we have received mercy we faint not but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty Lord. not walking in practice nor handling the word of deceitfully but by manifestation of the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them, which we believe not, lest the light of this glorious gospel of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. For he that exhorted on our exaltation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, and he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Stop there. Amen. The last part of that verse. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. I want to talk about the spiritual gift of mercy. It is a spiritual gift. And the title for today is Look at somebody and say, Lord, have mercy. And then tell them, have mercy, Lord. How many have ever heard somebody say, Lord, have mercy? Remember that spiritual gifts are given by the Holy Spirit to individuals in the body of Christ always to glorify him. And maybe some of you never thought that this was a spiritual gift. But this gift is usually towards those who are suffering. It's having compassion or showing gracious favor. But it's more than just a feeling. It's also an action. It's of divine love under the Spirit's guidance. And we're acting in the place of Christ. And the main objective is that he is glorified. He that showeth mercy. Your heart not only goes out, but along with your heart goes action. Because many times we can feel it and never do anything about it. That's not the gift of mercy. The gift of mercy means that I extend myself and not only feel it, but I'm willing to share in their need, in their pain, that I do something about it. And it's not just a one-time thought. The people who have the gift of mercy even after it leaves the news report and is no longer in the forefront, you still have a compassion for that individual. Most of us don't realize that in New Orleans there are still people without homes. In the beginning there was this whole influx of everything and now they tell us there's still people without homes. There's a lot of people who are homeless. There are people who don't have running water yet, and that's been a few years. But there's, some, there's still some people 
who have a heart, who still go down once a month and try to take care of the needs of those who are suffering. If we don't have it, we need to ask God. If that is my gift, make it known to me. And some of you are operating in that gift and never knew that that was a spiritual gift. Where you are willing to take what you have and give to somebody else who may never be able to repay you. You got to reach the point that you just don't give to people and you say, well, when I need, they'll give it back. But it's those individuals that you know that could never give it back to you. And then once you give it, you don't keep reminding them of what I did. No, the real gift just keeps on giving and never asks anything in return. It's foundational gifts. It's also in the beginning. Go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 44. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. They did it in the early church before there was ever a welfare system, any of the social services that we have now, before any of those things were in place. God used the church to take care of those needs. And the way the government is behaving now, they're trying to give that part of their government uh, away and trying to take away every benefit for seniors and widows and widowers and those who can't afford it. They are trying to take that gift away from them but if they take it away, God has already placed it in the heart of the church that we're supposed to step in and be that agent to take care of those who are less fortunate than we are. I'm not talking about taking care of folk who can take care of themselves. For we have a lot of folk who are able-bodied and can get a job. I'm not talking about those individuals. I'm talking about individuals who at this point are not able to even function on the level that they should. God will use somebody else. Go to Luke 17. And remember, we are standing in the place of Jesus. Luke 17, beginning at verse 12. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. If you know anything about leprosy, 
that whenever they came in contact with anybody, they would have to cry out, unclean. Matter of fact, they put them in colonies of leprosy so they were not even around the rest of the population. And because they believed that if you came in contact, because they were very contagious, if you came in contact with them, that you could also be affected by their leprosy. It says, and they stood afar off, and they cried out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us, 14. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered, said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give God Give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Ten were cleansed, but only one came back to give God glory. And I believe this morning that we got more than one who's come back to give God glory. Because when we cry, Lord, have mercy, God comes to our rescue. How many of you have had God to step in just in time? How many of you know it was nobody but the Lord? Nobody but God. And so every chance I get, I want to be the one to return just to say, And some of you have some of your thank yous held back. But by this time, after all that God has done for you, somebody in this room ought to say at least three, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I've been down. And you raise me up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was at a point where I couldn't see my way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You open a door. You heal my body. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I could have lost my mind. Thank you. Oh, God. He's made way for your children. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
I look back over my life and I begin to think things over, I can truly say that God has made a way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. Thank you for showing your kindness towards us. Thank you. And every now and then, some of you need to walk through your house and just say, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Every time you're able to pay a bill. <laughs> oh God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Said only one came back to say thank you. He healed 10, but only one came back. And I'm the one just to say thank you. Then asking God to make, Lord, if it be your will, can you give me the gift of mercy? So that I can show others the mercy that was shown to me. Let me give you a few more examples of showing mercy. Because right about now. I didn't deserve it, but he gave it to me anyway. I'm still here to show forth his goodness. Some of you don't realize that you're sitting next to somebody who's been through some things. But if it had not been for the Lord, If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, Thank you. Acts nine thirty six. Acts nine. 36. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman 
was full of good works and alms deeds which she did. A woman going out of her way full of good works and alms deeds, which are things, alms were gifts that were given to those who could not afford it. Alm deeds, which she did. You don't have to turn to it, but remember the brother that was sitting in chapter 3, don't turn to it, but just listen. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, saying, being the ninth hour, and a certain lame man from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms. And Peter fastening his eyes upon him when John said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Now look what the next thing that this man does. He asks an arm. Peter and John said, we don't, silver and gold we don't have, but what we do have, we're going to give you Jesus. And, and just rise up and walk. Look at verse 8. And he, leaping and stood and walked and entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. This man was on the outside of the temple begging, begging. We don't have silver and gold, but what we do have is Jesus. And it amazes me how some people ask God, Lord, heal me, make a way. Lord, if you do it for me this time, I promise I'll be there every step of the way. And as soon as the Lord does it, we don't see them anymore. This beggar was on the outside, came on the inside, walking, leaping, praising God. So when you see people in this room, and they may be doing any of the above, before you judge them. You don't know everything that God has done for them so they can walk and leap and praising God. Repeat, walk, leap, praising God. Ask your neighbor, when you gonna do it? Because many walk in here and park. But just look back. Because some of you got a testimony in here about how God has been merciful unto you. Walk. Leaping. 
and praising God because when they ask for one thing, I, I'm a witness like some of you. Some people don't need another program. They need Jesus. They don't need another handout. They need a relationship with God. They don't need anybody else feeding them one by one. No, they need Jesus Christ. And let there be somebody in this house that has the gift of showing mercy that they may have their whole situation turned around. One more scripture, I believe, Acts 16. I'm going to start at verse 25 because, you know, this chapter deals with the preachers were preaching and uh, somebody got delivered. And this lady that got delivered had some people who she was working for. And uh, because of her deliverance, her employer got mad and had Paul and Silas put in jail. They're in jail for doing the work of the ministry, they've been placed in jail. And let's see what happens in 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. And the keeper of the prison, of the prison, awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled, been fled. But Paul cried. What a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. How many of you are saved, and you're still waiting for the Lord to fulfill the rest of that because you want your house saved? You want your house saved. Now look, and they spake unto him the word of God and to all that were in his house. This is where they show mercy. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized he and all his straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. 